<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den. With me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Now, for today, we are diving back into the Lore Master Spell Guide, and we're taking a look at, well, all the spells so far have been classics, but this is the one that every mage has had. Unless somebody has specifically built a wizard to not have this in their spell book, which just seems kind of wrong to me, but you know, they, if you're having fun, whatever. But if you haven't divined it yet from the title, we are talking about Magic Missile. Yes, it is that classic 1d4 plus 1 points of damage. Several darts fly out to unerringly strike and pincushion the target and deal damage. It's a, it's a wonderful spell, especially for first level. It's a really good spell, and it's a spell that actually can keep its usefulness. Well, depending on the edition that you're playing, at any rate. But, let's just go ahead and dive right on into the details, some of the specifics, and just kind of get rolling along with this one, because I could gush for way too long about some of these different spells. So, starting us off with all of this when it comes to magic missile this first appeared in the dungeons and dragons supplement book greyhawk the, uh, specifically the greyhawk campaign setting which is where you get a lot of the stuff like uh gods like pelor hextor all these different guys uh and this is where mordenkainen's from this is where big beast from all these different characters started off running around in greyhawk and until fourth edition Mm, fourth edition. Magic missiles always hit with no saving throw. Fourth edition saw the creators, you know, change this, but they eventually took the spell back to its original effects after plenty of players complained about it, and rightly so. Fourth edition. Anyways, sorry, I could bang on so much about why fourth edition is terrible. But. Magic Missile was originally inspired by the 1963 film The Raven, which also inspired the Shield spell, which in the film was used to block the Magic Missiles. And in 2nd edition, there wasn't really any upper limit to the number of missiles that could be accrued by leveling up, as you top out at 5 missiles normally, but every couple of levels you'd get another one, and so 2nd edition it just went up and up and up and up keeping that first level spell incredibly useful. But, of course, all good things, well, all things just change, good and bad, and Magic Missile was kind of reined in a little bit for your third edition and also uh, uh, for Pathfinder. The spell takes a casting action of one standard action. Its range is medium, up to 100 feet plus 10 feet per level, and you can target up to five creatures, no two of which can be more than 15 feet apart. It's an instantaneous effect. There is no saving throw, although it does allow for spell resistance. And specifically what this does, a missile of magic energy forms at the, at the character's fingertips and is fired from there, and they unerringly fly to strike their target. They deal 1d4 plus 1 points of damage per missile and the missile will strike its target without fail unless they are in some kind of total concealment. So they have to be completely obscured, covered, protected in order for this spell to fail, or have the shield spell going. Every two levels after first, the character will gain a second missile, maxing out at five missiles by level nine. And so that's that's, that's uh, the magic missile spell within third edition and then in Pathfinder. And really, it's not all that bad, and its damage output is limited. I mean, a d4, you're topping out at 20 tops with the plus ones thrown in there, 25. Big whoop. There's so many creatures that can tank that so easily. But, on the other hand, though, it always hits unless they're totally covered, meaning you should only be firing this at targets that you can see and know are... Uh, not thoroughly protected, but in some fashion, or at least believe that or not anticipate that, see that somehow, whatever. 
And the other thing is, it's an untyped damage. It's just raw magic force. There's no fire resistance, no acid resistance, no lightning resistance. None of that stops this. The only thing that really does is just an outright damage reduction. And, well, granted, at certain higher levels, a lot of creatures could end up having some form of damage reduction. But even still, being able to deal untyped damage is useful, especially when you need to make sure a target gets hit. And... While this shouldn't be your first spell, especially at higher levels, it's uh, blasting magic, dealing damage is not the first goal. It's affecting the terrain, affecting enemy movement, debuffing the enemy, buffing your allies. All these things to mechanically affect the game which are your number one priorities. And then blasting's kind of a tertiary concern using fireball, lightning, magic missile, burning hands, and shock and grasp. But when the, that need arises, say you're pretty sure the target is on their last legs, just a couple of hit points left. Throwing out a max level magic missile can do enough damage to bring that target down, especially when you know it's on type damage. And if you have sp uh, spell penetration on top of it, giving yourself bonuses to overcoming a target's spell resistance... Well, hell, this just gets better and better, and those are things that you should have as a wizard. Especially if you're playing an elf, you just automatically get that. But taking spell penetration on top of it as a defeat, that will allow you to overcome spell resistance much more readily. Which means you're not really worried about saves, you're just worried about how much damage you roll. And, well, even if you roll all ones, you're dealing a minimum of 10 points of damage that's untyped. Getting past spell resistance, probably, and potentially dropping that target down at least to zero, if not negative, if you know they're on their last legs, which, with magic, you can very easily try to track that. So, it's not that bad a spell. It's actually fairly useful in uh, the right situations. But, you know, that's true of any spell, honestly. But, that's all the 3rd edition and Pathfinder stuff. What's it look like in 5th edition? Well, it's changed up a fair bit. The casting time is one action, range is 120 feet, and that's it. And of course, instantaneous duration. It's an instant effect. And to start it off, when you get this, you create three glowing darts of magical force, and each dart hits a target of your choice that you can see within range, so they don't have to be clumped close together. They just have to be within that 120 foot range in any radius around you. A dart deals 1d4 plus 1 points of force damage to its target. The darts all strike simultaneously and you can direct them to hit one creature or several. And at higher levels, when you cast the spell at a spell slot of second level or higher, the spell creates one more dart for each slot above first. So, you can take a 5th level spell and get 7 darts out of this thing. That's awesome. It's, it's kind of a throwback to its 2nd edition version, but you can deal a greater deal more damage with it. The only real drawback or limitation is your range is a bit more, well, limited in comparison to its 3rd uh, edition version. But again, that's not bad at all. And again, it's force damage. Although 5th edition's rules are changed so much, force damage is still something that not a lot of creatures resist, if any that I can think of. I mean, not as familiar as 5th fifth, fifth edition, but, uh, you know, even still, this is going to be able to massively affect a wide variety of targets, making this a, still a very useful spell. So definitely one for any competent wizard to have in their repertoire, especially for 5th edition. I mean, you'd be crazy not to have this. Well, I say crazy. Maybe you have a specific build in mind, which, again, still just kind of seems wrong to me not to have this, especially as a wizard. But, hey, you know what? More power to all of you players out there for being creative and coming up with your own unique and interesting builds. But for wizards and sorcerers, this is absolutely an incredible spell, useful to have, and definitely one to keep your eyes on. But with that said, 
we are going to go ahead and end it all here. This has been the Magic Missile Spell in the War Master Spell Guide. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, go on down there and hit that like button. Or, if you've enjoyed this video that much, or if this hasn't been your first stop, go on down there and hit that subscribe button for me. Certainly would appreciate having more viewers and regulars here at the Gamer's Den. And to that end, there's also going to be a couple of videos popping up over this away. And if you've been enjoying things here, then you might enjoy a few things over here. Go ahead and click on them and take a scroll through. But with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.